Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, depending on where you're at, right? It is the Earth Master out here on this, uh, well, it's Monday, Monday night here, California time, December 18, 2023. It's about 1049 here in the evening, California time here once again. Uh, 1.2 Alaska also uh, looks like a 2.9 um, there in the Oklahoma region, the latest earthquakes on the globe. Well, what's going on with Iceland? Goodness, this uh, definitely making its rounds all over social media. It's crazy how fast uh, news can travel in this age of information. Um, okay, so the latest statement here from the Icelandic Met Office. Um, this was put out just earlier. The uh, intensity of the volcanic eruption, which started about four hours ago, is decreasing. Uh, and this is evident from seismic and GPS measurements. Uh, the, uh, the fact that the activity is decreasing already is not an indication of how long the eruption will last, but rather that the eruption is reaching a state of equilibrium. This development has been observed at the beginning of all eruptions on the Reykjanes Peninsula in recent years. Uh, this eruptive fissure that opened up here a few hours ago is uh, about four kilometers long. I think it's a little bit longer than that now, they say, uh, with um, the uh, southern end here showing some signs of uh, continuance as far as, um, you know, the fissure activity um, furthering. Um, the eruptive fissure is four kilometers long with the northern end just east of this area here and the southern end just east of the um, I, I don't have those words down yet. The distance from the southern end to the edge of Grindavik is almost three kilometers. Um, so it looks like uh, uh, in their latest aerial observations, uh, the eruptive fissure is expanding to the south. So that's what I'm uh, I'm saying. Trying to was trying to say here is that we're seeing um, the southern end here. Um, expanding so to speak i i think that's the word maybe uh that would best describe that continuing down here um and that is kind of not in a good zone um they're, they're thinking that the potential lava could travel down into the green area now this map right here um will show you the exact that, that's kind of odd that it's taking so long to load up a, a png image can't be that big can it goodness um, so here's the overview. There is the um, fissure that has opened up. And this is pretty close to where I had stated here on the earthquake, uh, um, well, on the uh, Google Earth view earlier, roughly within this area. Pretty darn close. Uh, but this is the official statement here from them. And uh, with, the, with the likelihood here of further continuance of the fissure opening up here further south, uh, that could spell some trouble here. Uh, for the Grindavik area as the uh, lava could flow down into the town area. Uh, now the power station and the Blue Lagoon area sits right over here. And um, it's possible we could see uh, that travel over here as well. I see these ISO lines here uh, indicating the terrain difference. Now this whole area is somewhat elevated, right? With the Grindavik area a little bit further down in elevation. Uh, so it's possible, um, you know, with the uh, magma coming up and spewing out on both sides here that we could see uh, that magma make its way over here or potentially down into the Grindavik area. But something to watch, something to uh, obviously keep an eye on uh, here in the coming days. If this intensifies, if we get a further increase in magma from below, it all could be not good news. So definitely uh, watching it pretty closely. Uh, the latest, uh, let's check out this view here of Iceland. I know it has calmed down slightly as far as the eruptive, um, visual aspect of things, right? Not a whole lot of huge fountain going on. And at first, any type of eruption is going to be, you know, the, uh, uh, dramatic show, so to speak, because of that magma that's been down there, um, for a little while underneath pressure. So now we're just kind of seeing a continual flow of magma coming up. It's still pretty awesome looking, but also at the same time, they're very dangerous in terms of the, uh, you know, the likelihood of maybe this uh, affecting uh, populated regions nearby. Um, it definitely uh, is an awesome site, that's for sure. But the threat 
uh, still remains high out there for the uh, power plant and the Grindavik area, Blue Lagoon region as well. We'll continue to check back on that as uh, this is definitely a, uh, uh, a concern here. Uh, earthquake activity, let's bring this up here, make sure we got the most recent earthquake map uh 421 earthquakes goodness over the last 12 hours that's quite the earthquake activity but notice uh here in the last few hours things have died down quite a bit uh, uh just within the last four to five hours there's maybe um uh, 10 or 15 earthquakes so um we'll have to watch this earthquake activity does play uh or it gives us gives us a little indicator of what's going on down below maybe some potential further uh, magma intrusion going on here magma rising up to the surface we'll have to keep an eye on that but as you can see that's uh crazy with the uh you know it's it, to me it looks like the southern end here is getting awfully close to the uh, Grindavik region uh we'll, we'll have to watch that and see how this plays out overnight but uh, we'll continue to watch it uh and uh report back on any major changes here if they happen all right, look at the earthquake activity here around the globe. Uh, this is the USGS map here showing, um, well, not a whole lot up here in the Pacific Northwest. Things relatively calm for the most part. Uh, the West Coast here where I'm at, nice and wet. Steady rain still going on here. Picked up over three inches of rainfall here in the last, well, yesterday and today, so two days. Expecting more rain here for the next couple days as well. So we are... Uh, definitely looking at uh, a little bit of flooding already around here. I mean, three inches in a short amount of time uh, time span is a, a lot. So earthquake activity, though, generally light. Not seeing um, any major uh, earthquake activity out here. Nothing above 2.5, a little 2.9 down here in the Baja California region. Uh, that was way earlier this morning, just after midnight my time. So things are uh, a little on the quiet side. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, a couple earthquakes there across that super volcano. Um, let's see what we got here for the latest uh, uh, information here. I'm not really seeing any earthquake activity showing up here at all, to be honest. Uh, things look uh, pretty calm. Not a whole lot. Okay, so we'll move on from here. And uh, there's some activity there in New Mexico. Texas area getting in on quite a bit. It's just been that way for a while now at the oil fields. They've been getting hammered. A 2.9 up here near Follett, Texas. I think that's how you pronounce that. Uh, yeah, it looks like that's on the Texas side. wonder what's up there. Let's see. It's kind of an odd area. Uh, it looks like some farmland out there. Uh, but specifically where this earthquake is, uh, that's actually pretty shallow. 1.2 kilometers deep. Um I don't see any, uh, well, hard to say what this is. This kind of looks like maybe some type of wastewater pond. Uh, again, not for sure, not 100% certain. Um, but uh, that's definitely an interesting earthquake, pretty shallow out there. And uh, some further movement south of OKC region. Look at the rest of the uh, globe out here. There's some... Uh, Earthquake activity from this morning. Mainly shallow movement here across this plate boundary. Um, seeing that migration of pressure, it looks like transferring across the Java Trench area. Nothing big going on there for now. Uh, over here across China and areas to the west, they've been somewhat elevated here. Been getting uh, quite a bit of earthquake activity up here into into the uh, India region, the Himalaya area. Of course, China's seen quite a bit up here as well with that 5.9. Uh, earlier this morning and uh, quite a few fours stirred up there following that earthquake activity just elevated out here in general and uh, we'll continue to watch that the sign uh, this is a, definitely a sign of uh, maybe seeing some further uh, adjustment here across this plate boundary as we work our way to the west here uh, so keep an eye on that uh, 3.0 coming into the mediterranean region here uh, looks like that was just off the coast here of greece but nothing Nothing major coming in, uh, at least for that area now, for now. There's the Iceland activity. A small amount, definitely a small amount. <laughs> that's what the USGS is reporting, but that's definitely a lot more, let me tell you. Uh, South America region, there's some of the uh, deeper movement quakes here, centered around the Peru-Chile Trench in general. Um, 
New Zealand. It looks like a 3.4 stirring up down here on the on the uh, plate boundary, and uh, a little 2.8 out there in Australia. Looks just like a, a normal day for now in terms of plate uh, tectonics. Uh, let's see what we got for trimmer activity here tonight. 48. 48 epicenters. Not that big of a deal, but uh, it's a little bit. But we're still down there in terms of the uh, the trimmer number over the past year or so. Uh, last major uh, trimmer event was back in October of last year. So things kind of... Uh, Slowing down for now across this area. Uh, space weather activity. Uh, getting quite a few sunspots here on the visible disk on the earth-facing side here. Um, quite the number, that's for sure. Uh, looking at uh, a few of these, they have the potential to produce some uh, flaring. This area up here uh, in this region down here, specifically, it looks like this wants to uh, spit out a strong flare. Uh, quite a bit of complexity within that magnetic core of this sunspot, uh, this area as well. Uh, getting a huge cluster out here of growth. Uh, we'll watch this here in the coming days, but for right now, I think the main area to watch is going to be this uh, region right here on the, uh, what is that, 3529. Here's a couple unnamed sunspots coming around the bin. But uh, goodness, that is quite active. If you look at this image here, there's a uh, Definitely a lot of activity stirring up here on the sun. Uh, no major expected aurora events for now. Uh, looks like maybe some unsettled conditions remaining through the night. Although the aurora does not look all that uh, uh, likely there across the polar regions with that aurora forecast. And really nothing uh, forecasted there in the coming days. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Storm Prediction Center. See if we got any severe weather out here. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, still looking at, uh, potential for some thunderstorm activity out here in the West Coast. Uh, but that's about it. We're not really expecting any major, um, you know, storminess. Now, California out here, uh, there's our current storm. This low pressure system's just been tapping into a lot of subtropical moisture from the south. It, like I say, it's just been raining and raining like crazy here the past two days. Uh, that is going to uh, kind of move off and be replaced with a secondary low pressure system that's going to be aimed, aimed a little bit more towards the Southern California area. Uh, as you can see, that uh, is tapping in some uh, moisture from the south as well. Uh, so that's good news for uh, those guys. And we got a couple days break here. looks like our next storm system is going to come in a uh, day after Christmas or so. Not a big one. Uh, still a little uncertainty on this here. Um, but it does look like that one has a uh, substantial amount of moisture aimed right at Northern California once again there. With uh, some impressive rainfall rates. And, and that's reinforced by another storm behind that. And looks like a couple more storms after that. So... Uh, we'll continue to watch this, see how it plays out as we enter into the new year. I can't believe it's happening here. Well, I mean, we got a, uh, almost a couple weeks here. Uh, but it's getting close. Definitely getting close to the end of 2023. All right, uh, let's see what else is there. I think that's about it. Um, again, the... Uh, the view out here is spectacular, that's for sure. All that lava in the in the background. That is lava right out here. I'm goodness. Uh so it's inter it'll be interesting to see the uh the daylight uh portion of this. You know, they all the aerials and uh, shots they've been taking right now have been in the dark. So I kinda wanna see where this is at specifically. I know they gave us that map, but uh, from the air and the daytime, it would be uh, a little bit more beneficial on how far that magma is traveling and which direction exactly and where uh, the potential for uh, damage may be. So we'll watch this. Uh, this is up on the live stream as well. I do have that uh, playing up there. And the, the main site uh, is going to be the uh, live from Iceland.is. There's actually a whole uh, multi-view here of... Uh, different areas of Iceland. This is the Svartsingi area. Um, you can see the glow over here. That's pretty crazy right here. That's uh, that's uh, re really close. 
definitely see the glow out here on the mountains and uh yeah so that's just one there's many other um cameras out here that you can check out either way we'll continue to watch that and pick back or uh, check back on that tomorrow morning see if they got any uh, further updates here for us uh, in the meantime have a good night folks uh, a couple earthquakes there right smack dab on the puerto rico trench a 3.7 coming in here pretty recent along with a couple other ones uh, nothing big for now but this area definitely uh, can see some larger quake activity uh, a look at the seismograph stations here. It looks like Philippines uh, showing a little bit of earth, uh, earthquake activity. Not showing up on the USGS map yet. Um, doesn't look like it's come into the earthquake 3D globe yet either, but uh, it just kicked up. So that's probably, um, I'm guessing in the four range, just looking at some of those micro, um, these uh, amplitudes here of this station. I've been getting pretty good at judging these uh these earthquake magnitudes just by looking at the uh, the graphs, but then again, that's all got to do uh, you know where it's at exactly, proximity to the seismograph station and whatnot. So, all right, uh, have a good one, folks. We'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow. I'm I'm gonna call it a night. I'm gonna keep the window open, enjoy the rain, and uh, hopefully get a good night's sleep. Take care, everyone. Stay safe out there.